Hello everyone. So our story this time is about a little mouse. Here he is. Can you remember the sign for mouse? You can? Absolutely right. This is a sign for mouse. And this little mouse's name is Quill. Now you might think that's a really funny name, but it works for this little mouse because Quill is an old fashioned pen that's made out of feather and people used it for writing. And this little mouse loves writing. Can you guess where a mouse who likes stories and writing might live? You can? You're right. It's in a library. So this is a sign for library. There's a books and lots and lots and lots of them on the shelf. And here we are. This is our story today. The library mouse. So if you're ready, I will begin. Here we go. In a half-hidden hole where the wall met the floor sat a dreamer called Quill and with his pen in his paw. He lived in a beautiful building of books that shimmied up shelves and nestled in nooks. There we are, can you see little Quill sitting in his special hidey hole, busy writing and writing and writing. Can you see him? Let's find out what happens next, shall we? Here we go. Each morning he crept from his home to behold the faces of children as stories were told. If only small timid creatures like me could share my own stories, how proud I would be. I may be a, my, a mouse, but I've much to say. Could someone like me be an author? Maybe one day. So what does he want to do for his job? You're right, he wants to be a writer and he can see all the children enjoying story time. And he would like to be able to write stories for the children to enjoy too. He says, I'm only little, but I have got lots to say. Let's see what happens. With the candle stub burning, he sat down to write, his pen full of power, his words bold and bright. Quill scribbled and scrawled till his story was done. But how can I share it with everyone, he said. His frisky friend, Lexi, then jitter bugged out. Can you see this is Lexi? He lives in the library as well. Perhaps you can read it yourself if you shout, said Lexi. So can you see him, Quill, busily writing his story? And when he was finished, he was thinking, oh, how can I share it with everybody? I'm only little. Lexi says he was going to have to shout. You're right, to make his voice big enough to be heard. So Quill coughed importantly. <laughs> and wiggled his toes, took a big breath through his whiskery nose. But mice speak so softly that nobody heard his wonderful story, not even one word. Oh no. So he tried to use his biggest voice and he shouted as loud as he could, but nobody could hear him. Oh no. Can you see him? Oh, Quill. He tried so hard, didn't he? Oh dear, Quill. Quill made a new plan. I'll hang up some twine and peg out my pages like a clothesline. His words spanned the bookshelf, but really quite low. Oh, shoes can't read books, he said with a frown. So, Nobody noticed and nobody heard his wonderful story, not even one word. Lexi was watched and he jitterbug by. I try to solve problems by sitting up high. So Lexi said if he's trying to solve a problem, he climbs up as high as he can. So let's see if that works for our little Quill. Can you see Quill pegging out his pages? They're only down very low because Quinn is only little. So nobody could see his pages of writing. Well, only shoes. And shoes can't read, can they? 
the friends skittered up to the tippy top shelf where they tripped on a book called Believe in Yourself. Quill beamed, oh look, it says that failing is fine. In fact, it is failing that helps us to shine. For every mistake is a lantern of light to shine on a problem and put matters right. So it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fail because that is how we learn and how we get it right next time. So that is a good book for Quinn to have found. It says, don't give up, keep trying. Keep trying and you will get there. Can you see him? Right, what's he gonna try next? He tried the washing line, but that was too low. He tried shouting, but that wasn't loud enough. What can he do next? What do you think he will do? So, soon there were story darts. Oh my goodness, soaring aloft. What's he gonna try and do? So he's turned his pages into aeroplanes. Oh my goodness. They dived to the floor where they zigzag and dropped. I hope that a human will see each dart. It is a page from a book and the book's from my heart. So can you see, he says, I hope that the humans are gonna see the pages from my book because they come from my heart. Oh, so he loves his story and he wants to share it with everybody else. Do you think that works? Turning them into paper darts and flying them? Is that a good plan? Let's have a look. When the stars lit the library, the door went creak and Quill spotted a cleaner and swallowed a squeak. Oh no! She picked up his stories and marched to the bin and one after another the pages went in the bin. Oh no! Quinn tried to object. Hey! he shouted but his voice disappeared. His story had met a fate worse than he feared. In anguish he shouted, go check out the bin. You need to be careful what you chuck in. My writing's not rubbish. It's um, now no one will share my wonderful story. It's too much to bear. So he said, please don't throw my story in the bin. My story is not rubbish. Can you see? Oh no, Quinn's story has ended up in the bin. The cleaner thought that it was rubbish on the floor. She didn't know. Oh no. Oh Quinn, I'm so sorry. He looks ever so sad. Quinn flopped down defeated and jumped on his pen. I'm fed up, I'm finished, I won't write again, he said. A small timid creature can't possibly be a real living author. This dream is not for me. Oh, don't give up, Quill. He says, I'm not going to dream anymore. I can't be a writer. Oh, and he's feeling really sad. At bedtime, poor Quill's whiskers wobbly wept. Oh, he's feeling so sad. His, fat, his sadness was vast and the mouse barely slept. Can you see him trying to get to sleep? But he can't quite get to sleep because he's feeling so sad. He keeps thinking about his wonderful stories and that no one is ever going to read them. Oh, Quill, you poor thing. Poor old Quill, it'll be okay, don't worry. Next morning, the story time bell. Oh, a story time bell. Here we go. Can we hear it? Story time bell. Oh, I like that. Story time bell woke the mouse who slumped out of bed with a grump and a grouse. He saw the cleaner was holding a book and stuck out his snout with a beady look. He wants to see what the cleaner is holding. Well, as luck could have it, my hearing device was tuned into sound waves of small shouty mice, said the cleaner. A high squeaky yell made me check in the bin. Thank goodness I did, cause I'd thrown this book in. It's yours, shouted Leggy, who jitterbug madly. You've got their attention. She spun around madly. Woohoo! 
she said, you've done it. She's so happy for Quill. Can you see the cleaner? And can you see she wears a hearing aid? And she was able to tune in and hear this little tiny mouse voice. And she went and checked the bin and she found Quill's story. Hooray! Have any of you got a hearing aid? You have? Well, there you are. Can you hear mice? I think I'd like to be able to hear mice. That would be fun. Quill gulped. Oh, sorry, beg your pardon. Quill gulped and emerged all days to behold. Faces lit up as his story was told. And everyone listened and everyone heard his wonderful story, each fabulous word. What's more, with the help of the hearing device, Quill offered the children all writing advice. So can you see? Because the cleaner can hear him, she tells the children um, his ideas about how to do writing so he can help them all do writing. Hooray! Well done, Quill. Well done. That's really good. That's so kind to help the children. Good work. In a half-hidden hole, where the wall met the floor, sat a writer called Quill with a pen in his paw. And here he is. Quill has become a writer. For he was an author of beautiful books that shimmered up shelves and nestled in nooks. And that is the end of this story. So I have a special project for all of you over the summer. In our school library, we are going to have a special space that is going to be for the stories that you all write. So over the summer, have a think, have a dream and see if you can think of an idea for a story. I really hope you can. I can't wait to read them. See you all soon. Bye bye for now.